guys welcome back to my channel today I'm doing something a little bit different I'm going to be getting ready for a concert tonight and reading your assumptions about me I asked you on Instagram stories to give me your juiciest assumptions and I got some interesting ones that may or may not be true so we'll be talking through them today this is not a makeup tutorial I will list the products that I use below so that if you are curious you can see what I'm using today but yeah I just thought I would do something fun and different while I'm getting ready for this concert tonight and yeah Let's get into it. I got a lot of different assumptions assuming that viola was not my first instrument. Here's one that says you want to play other instruments but you couldn't and the viola was the second option. Well, that is not true. I talked to my dad about what instrument I wanted to play because my public school was getting an orchestra and they were just starting a strings program. We were actually one of the first strings programs in Middle Tennessee for a public school. At first I thought violin because I knew I wanted to play something on my shoulder, but I didn't even know what a viola was. And my dad suggested that I play the viola. He told me that it has some really interesting parts. And then he told me that Mozart and Beethoven loved the viola and that Beethoven actually played the viola. And that was all I needed to get into the viola. So viola was my very first instrument. Well, technically my first instrument was piano. I played piano for two years as a kid when I was like four to six. And then I got into sports, put music behind me for a little bit and didn't start playing again until I was in the sixth grade. Oh f I forgot to prime my skin, but I did moisturize. All right, anyways, I don't know why I felt like I couldn't just read these assumptions, like I had to be doing something. This will sheer out, <laughs> I promise. I felt like I had to be doing something while I was talking to you guys. So that's why I decided I would do one of the things I love most, and that's putting on my makeup since I had to get ready for tonight anyways. I look like a ghost. Oh, it's new. I am like a translucent person. So yeah, I started on the viola and then never looked back. I usually don't go this full coverage for like an everyday kind of thing, but since I have a concert, I figured I would get a little crazy. So I know I look kind of crazy right now, but looks pretty flat. As I get into my other products, it'll start to look better, promise. You cannot read base cliff fluently. That's partially true. I mean, I've gotten so much better at reading bass clef since I have been doing more videos with like quartet parts where I've been playing ch the cello part. Also over the years I've done a lot of piano parts that I've arranged into string parts. So I've gotten a lot better at reading bass clef, but I don't think I'm as good as somebody that, you know, reads bass clef full time per se. You don't go out without makeup on. That's not true, mostly. Most of the time I will at least put on some mascara or something, but if it's a Sunday and I'm like going to the grocery store with my mom or my brother or something, a lot of times, no, I won't put on makeup to like go to Walmart. But I do love wearing makeup, so I like to get up early before work and make sure I have enough time to put something on my face. I assume you've played viola since you were five. Sadly, that is not true. I wish that were true. I think it would have been, I think if I had started younger, it probably would have helped with some of my performance anxiety. I don't know if that's true or not, but like, I think I would have had more opportunities to start performing earlier on. I didn't do my first performance till I was like solo recital until I was 15 years old, which is pretty old, I think, to be giving your first recital. I knew kids that started giving their first recital when they were three. So I started playing when I was 12, or actually I was 11 technically, but almost 12 in the sixth grade. So I felt like I had some catching up to do when I started playing in the Nashville Youth Symphony and realized that a lot of other kids were really good. And I was like, oh God, I suck at my instrument and I have a lot of catching up to do. You practice every day. That is sadly not true anymore. I used to practice every day pretty religiously. It was something that, you know, if you want to win a job, you have to practice daily. So that was something I did for a, a long time, like many, many years of practicing every day. But now I'm teaching full time and I only perform on the weekends usually. And it's not every weekend. So I sadly do not practice really with any kind of regularity anymore. A lot of times I'll get home from work and I'll want to play through some stuff, 
No, I don't I don't practice as religiously as I used to. You like Harry Potter. Yes, I do. That is a safe assumption. Your viola teacher made a lasting impression in your life. I've had four, five technically teachers um, throughout my life and they've all made such a lasting impact upon me and I am so grateful for all my teachers and I'm lucky that I still have a good relationship with all of my teachers and I feel free to call them and you know get their opinions. I played for them all the time when I was auditioning for a full-time job. My viola teachers have just been such a source of inspiration for me. On that note, you had good teachers growing up which helped mold your technique. I feel really lucky to have really good teachers from day one and I really thank my dad for that because he was a pianist and he knew enough to get in touch with the symphony and find me a really, really good teacher from day one. So I've always had teachers that were either in the Nashville Symphony or had been in a symphony um, or had taught at the college level. So I feel really lucky and fortunate that I have had the teachers I have had. In college, you used to practice six hours or more a day. That's the tea. Yes, I practiced a lot in college and after college because I was still looking for a full-time job after college. There were days I would get up super early. I mean, super duper early and try to practice two to four hours in the morning before school and then I would practice for a couple hours after school as well. My goal, especially the last two to maybe three years I was in college, was to do at least six hours a day. Some days I even did eight, just cause that's what you have to do to be competitive. And those were also the years that I really noticed the most increase in my technique and my comfortability, is that a word? My comfortability on my instrument. It just, things started to feel easier within those last few years of college. I feel like I really got better because I just started putting in the work. And I always practiced before that, but I really didn't take it to that extreme level until then. And then I tried to keep that up once I was out of college too. It just was really hard with a crazy routine of like traveling all the time and being on the road just to play in orchestras. You have a clean sense of humor and you hate ska music. <laughs> Hate's a strong word. I really don't hate much music. When I was in high school, I, there was a ska moment. But yeah, no, like to the extent that like No Doubt was influenced by ska and maybe that's like <laughs> the extent of my ska listening, which I guess is probably not really ska. Blend, 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 blend. You secretly enjoy playing violin more than viola. That is not true. I am more of a harmony person. Which I don't know. I, eh. Of course I love the melody. Who doesn't? But I actually find the harmonies often to be more interesting. When I'm in the car alone singing, I am trying to find harmony parts. You can ask my friends, my ex-boyfriends, anybody who's listened to me sing in the car. And I find it much more fun to create my own harmonies than to sing the melody. So, and I don't know if like being a violist has helped me in that regard. Yeah, I love being a violist. There are times it's boring. There are times violin is boring. You know, just because you're a violinist doesn't mean you always have the melody. Often second violinists don't have the melody. Sometimes, believe it or not, the first violinist doesn't have the melody. So just because I'm not playing the melody all the time doesn't really mean that I don't love the viola, you know? I think the viola has its purpose and I love being a middle voice. I don't really get to play with color very much because I have a day job. And like my students would just be like, why are you wearing so much makeup? We're not going to party. You know, they would definitely say something and like, I don't want to distract my students. So I do wear makeup to work, but I don't get to like go full out like this. So when I have concerts and stuff that I can put on a lot of makeup, I tend to go to town. You are naturally a blonde. Ha! No, 
I am not naturally blonde. I was as a kid. I had blonde hair as a kid. If you've followed me for a while, either on YouTube or Instagram, you'll know that, yeah, I am brunette. I actually am very dark, not black, but I have dark brown hair, you can probably tell. I just really liked dyeing my hair, you know? I've always liked dyeing my hair. I first dyed my hair when I was in third grade. My mom let me do like a washout hair dye. You were popular in high school but aren't still friends with anyone from then. I would not say I was popular in high school. I don't think I was unpopular in high school per se. I was really quiet in high school. I still am a pretty quiet person. So I really was not super outgoing and I naturally made friends with some of the kids in my class. And so I was friends with them throughout all of high school, but I would not say that I was popular. I had a lot of different groups that I hung out with, a lot of different circles. Honestly, when I was in high school, I started working part-time. And when I was 15, I started working part-time. And then I got a boyfriend. And after that, it was like, my friends in high school were limited to just being in high school. I really didn't hang out with anybody outside of high school and it wasn't a conscious decision. It was just kind of what happened. I have people from high school that I knew from elementary school who I still keep in touch with, but honestly, like, I don't have that many friends. <laughs> I have a lot of acquaintances and I'm okay with that. You know, I have my family here. I hang out with them a lot. I like to go see my boyfriend when I can. Oh wow, this is the first time I've ever tried this color pop. It's called REM, the Super Chalk Shadow. I am pumped. You don't directly dislike any instrument. I really don't directly dislike any instrument. My least favorite instrument though is saxophone. And it has its time and its place. You know, like jazz sax, I can get into, although I'm not even that crazy about jazz if I'm being honest. Saxophone is my least favorite instrument. When I think of saxophone, I think of like, cheesy 80s sax and I just can't. Like a sax solo in the middle of a pop song. Not my vibe. If you could choose again, you would not choose the viola. I really love the viola, don't get me wrong, but I also really love cello. Like, ugh. I think cello is just such a beautiful sound and sometimes I wish that I would have chosen the cello, but I think it's really satisfying to play an instrument on your shoulder, so I guess I'll never really know. All right, we're getting somewhere. Hello, blue eyes. So to answer the question, I think I would choose viola again, but there is a slight chance I would have chosen the cello. That purple I put on top, gosh, it's so good. Like, why am I breaking out? I assume you are really tall. I wish. funny, when I was growing up, I was the tallest girl in my class, or at least one of them, always. I was always taller than all the boys, and I prayed to God that I would stop growing. And I prayed and prayed, and in fifth grade, I stopped growing. And I was 5'4". I was this tall in fifth grade, and I didn't grow again. I am living for blush. I am a little bit scared to wear bronzer, because I'm so freaking pale and I feel like it just makes me look like I'm wearing so much makeup when I wear bronzer and contour but I am a blush queen I live for blush it like it's the only thing that brings some color to my face you are a good student and enjoy studying a lot of different things yeah I really liked being in school I liked being in school a lot I just felt very goal oriented and I still do. I love having something to work towards. There's a lot of things in life that you don't have control over, but when somebody says you just have to do X, Y, Z to do well, then I'm like, okay, then I'm just gonna do X, Y, Z to do well. So for me, I, I really loved being in school and I am very interested in studying a lot of different things. So I actually didn't just decide on viola. It took me probably two or three years of being in college before I decided that that was what I wanted to do. I studied a lot of different things. I took a lot of different classes and was like, you know, this is what I love to do and I will regret it if I don't just give it my all and see if I can come out with a music job. I just put on a quick brow and some eyeliner and now I'm moving on to mascara. But the question was, you are not originally from Nashville, Tennessee. I am not originally from Nashville, Tennessee. I do live in Nashville, but I am originally from LA where all of my or most of my immediate family still lives. 
but I moved to Nashville when I was about 10. I never know what to tell people when they ask me where I'm from. Yeah, like I took way too much. <laughs> Is there such a thing as too much highlighter though? That's the real question. Now that I'm glowed up, I just need to put on some lips and then we'll be done. So guys, this is the finished look. Thanks for watching and getting a little bit glam with me. But before I go, I have to do the obligatory beautiful person montage. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this, more makeup tutorials. I guess this wasn't a makeup tutorial, but you know what I mean. If you want to see more makeup-y things, because this to me is like a dream combining music with makeup. Two of my favorite things on earth. Please don't be afraid to leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this kind of content. Maybe you hate it, maybe you love it. I don't know unless you let me know. You can also reach out to me on Instagram. My Instagram is Claire Kane Viola. My Twitter is Claire Kane Viola. I am on those two platforms a whole lot. Also, please don't forget to subscribe before you leave. I would really appreciate that. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.